Good evening from Pune, India, from your host for the day, Neelam Saxena. So how have you been doing, friends? I'm sure that you had been looking eagerly for the special international poetry meet, wherein we have a galaxy of poets. So let me welcome Kavita Azikil Mendoza from Canada, Iman Meliti from Tunisia, Vasanta Kalbagal from India, Nivedita Roy from Bahrain. Let me begin with a few lines from one of my poems from my collection, Splinters of a Broken Mirror. When the going gets tough, just like the golden barrel cactus, you bloom yellow and poesy drips from you instead of tears. How true it is that without emotions, poetry is not going to touch your hearts. It is these heartfelt heartfelt thoughts that make a poem and its creator shine uniquely. Well, I would like to introduce the esteemed guests on the panel today who shall be rendering their poems. Let me begin with Kavita. Kavita Ezekiel Mendoza was born in Bombay to Professor Nisim Ezekiel. Uh, now I know this is a name which is going to arouse various emotions, childhood memories. So Kavita was born to Professor Nisim and Daisy. She attended Queen Mary School, St. Xavier's College, Bombay University and Oxford Brookes University, UK. She holds bachelor's and master's degree in English, American literature and education. Her career spanned over four decades in Indian colleges, American international schools, and Canada teaching English, French, and Spanish. She's a published poet and has a poetry page on Facebook. She also blogs at kavitaisicalpoetry.com. Kavita has published two, poem, two books of poetry, Family Sunday and Other Poems, and Light of the Sabbath. Her poems have appeared in several anthologies, Welcome, Kavita. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward for some wonderful poems from you. Thank you. Iman Meliti. Oh, carry on. Iman so, Meliti from Tunisia is qualified in international relations and is a PhD. She's a translator. She has published three children's books and an academic book for college students, poetry collection in Florida, White Tulip. Poetry Collection, which is an e-book, Seasons of Sunflower. She has participated in several international anthologies and is a member in humanitarian associations. She has received many international awards and invited to many international festivals of poetry, journalism, in e electronic newspapers and magazines. Welcome, Imen. Thank you Waiting so much. Waiting for your wonderful poems. Thanks a lot. Now let me move on to Vasantha. Vasantha Kalbagal, who was a deputy registrar in Auckland High Court, New Zealand, is an image consultant. She's a bilingual poet. She has five poetry collections. Her humor essays, profiles of personalities, and travelogue on Brazil are under publication in Kannada, a South Indian language. Vasantha, though you have been to this page earlier, but it gives me immense pleasure to invite you once again. Thank you so much. Now, coming to our technical facilitator for the day, Nivedita. Nivedita Roy is a teacher by profession, bilingual poetess, recipient of Independence Day Literary Honors 2021 Awards by Motivational Strips, author of two solo books, and has co-authored eight poetry books. Her poems are published in many newspapers and sites in India and Bahrain. She is the moderator for the Bahrain Office of Motivational Strips and one of the admins for uh, our page, that is Neelam Saxena page. Over to you, Nivedita. Yes, dear. I was so enjoying listening to you that I almost <laughs> forgot that I'm supposed to introduce my host right now. <laughs> so, and I always... Tease Neelam, that Neelam, welcome to your own page, our own page. <laughs> <laughs> Neelam Saxena Chandra has authored five novels, one novella, and eight short story collections, 35 poetry collections, and 14 children's books. 
she is a bilingual author. She holds a record with the Limca Book of Records 2015 for being the author having the highest number of publications in a year in English and Hindi. She has won several international and national awards. She was listed in Forbes India as one of the most popular 78 authors in 2014. And something that she wow. missed to add, and I wish to add right here, she is such an inspiration, such a warm person who keeps welcoming poets and poetesses and keeps taking us along by holding our hand in our literary journey. So Neelam, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, dear Nivedita. Uh, uh, thanks for the kind words uh, that uh, with which you introduced me. So let's begin today's meet with a heartfelt rendition from the pen of none other than Kavita. Which poem would you like to render in the first round, Kavita? Okay, um, I'm supposed to be reading Light of the Sabbath, which I will do. But I just wanted to say that um, I love languages and uh, I write in uh, all the languages, including Marathi and Hindi. And I hope to continue yeah. writing in those languages, not like Neelam Ji or any of you, but I have a very short poem which I wanted mm -hmm. to dedicate to all those who love uh, languages. And it's a poem about the pandemic and it's called Kavita. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just for oh. if, if in case you don't know, Kavita means poem or poetry. Din ujhar gaya hai, lag raha hai jaisi raat. Din ujhar gaya hai, लग रहा है जैसी रात रास्तों में लोग बिगड़ बिछड़ गए हैं रास्तों में लोग बिछड़ गए हैं ये कैसी हुई बात ये कैसी हुई बात सो जस्ट फॉर इमेन आई एम आई एम सेइंग दैट यू नो द डे हैज डॉन्ड एंड ऑल द पीपल हैव जस्ट डिसअपियर्ड फ्रॉम द स्ट्रीट्स व्हाट्स द प्रॉब्लम एंड ऑफ कोर्स द प्रॉब्लम वाज द पेंडेमिक एंड द स्ट्रीट्स बिकेम वेरी क्वाइट सो दैट वाज डेडिकेटेड टू all my Indian friends here, uh, because I love Hindi, Marathi, French, Spanish, of course. And my first poem is from my book, Light of the Sabbath. Um, and I'm reading my poem, Light of the Sabbath, which was dedicated to uh, my favorite aunt who lived with me at my grandmother's house. Light of the Sabbath. Sacred Fridays of the Sabbath lambs and aunt's faithful hands squeeze grapes. She allows me to squeeze just a few. Purple juice stained hands in purple glass. Steady purple flame rising to him who listens. Meaning of the Shema revealed. Hebrew, English and Marathi prayers flood the room. God is a linguist. He understands all languages. He doesn't need a translator. The Sabbath done, she rubbed my hair with coconut oil, sleeping with newspapered pillow till morning, washing out the oil till hair lights shone by her same hands of faith that lit the Sabbath lamps, cooked red mutton curry, coconut rice on her room corner kerosene stove. Saturday evening, the sun gone to bed. <clears throat> Those hands that move mountains, stirred the curry, fluffed the rice faith may move mountains. The Lord said, let there be light, the Sabbath light, the light of 150 Psalms, a faithful reading on Saturdays. Each Friday evening, we squeezed the purple grapes of faith. And each Saturday, she said, she read all 150 Psalms, head covered with the sari scarf, her godly body swaying slightly lips moving in whispering, prayerful devotion. Thank you. So beautiful, Kavita. Very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful poem. And uh, I'm really surprised that uh, you can write so well in Hindi also. I didn't know about your this shade, you know. <laughs> so uh, it was a wonderful poem. Uh, poem, the Hindi one too, and the English one, of course, was very beautiful. Thank you so much. So coming to colors, colors are known to have different effects on our mind and body. I that when my daughter was small, one of my aunts suggested 
why don't you wear something more colorful since the daughter would find the ambience also vivid it indeed that if children can get so much affected by color we too must be subconsciously doing it isn't it but these are my views let's hear vasanta yeah. as she states her views in the poem colors and shades vasanta okay. this uh, poem is in a villanel format so i will read the poem first and then perhaps explain a bit about the technicality is that okay if you want to explain the technicality first you are most welcome okay. all right i have followed strictly followed the parameters of a villanel poem which is the 16th or 17th century french and english uh, part of poetry so this has uh, five tercets and one quatrain with uh, three liners and one four liner and in all it's 19 lines and we have two sets of uh, repeated rhymes and the first and third line of the first stanza gets periodically repeated so i've although it is a strict uh, strict form of poetry and I've, i've tried not to spoil the emotion and sensitivity of the poem okay i'll read it now colors and shades brown or cream black or white what makes sense to you the pale is offered a front seat and the dark near the door what's your preference tell me friend is there anything new lean is fashionable fair is acceptable but for a few tall is classy short is messy that the others ignore brown or cream black or white what makes sense to you rich is famous and fair in all fairness will get its due white orange yellow red dusky black races rich and poor what's your preference tell me friend is there anything new myriad colors across continents painting its hue bleach is faded bold is jaded is paste a likable more brown or cream black or white what makes sense to you can act or deed supersede and show its shades that's true won't hearts melt shows empathy and dress the hurting soul brown or cream what black and white what makes sense to you acts of kindness is so desired when heart is laden with true being honest being human is the best honor to the storm brown or cream black or white what makes sense to you what's your preference tell me friend is there anything new that's it thank you that's such a lovely poem i indeed love wins over all shades and colors wonderful really wonderful thanks so moving ahead once someone asked me during an online interview at what stage of poetry writing do you find yourself to be in i quickly replied i am a learner yes we all remain learners how much ever we know and the day we feel that we have completed our learning we are bound not to perform well let's hear what emen has to say in her poem i've learned over to you emen emen Thank you so much for this great opportunity. I want to greet all the bunch of flowers with us today. Thank you Nalima, thank you Navedita and uh, the guests of course. Uh my poem is Life's Lessons. If I have learned something from life is that sometimes from the darkest moments can take us to the brighter destination. I've learned that toxic people can teach us the most important lessons. that our most painful struggles can give us the greatest morals and that the most heartbreaking losses of love and friendship can pave way to the most wonderful encounters i've learned that what seems like a curse right now can actually be a blessing and what seems like the end of the road is actually the discovery that we are meant to take another path I've learned that even though things seems difficult there is always hope and I've learned that even though we feel helpless 
and things seem horrible, we can't give up. We must continue, even when it's scary, even when all our strengths seem exhausted. Thank you. That was a very touching poem uh, and very well uh, rendered by you. Thank you, dear Iman. Thank you so much. You know, during my early childhood, I came across that phrase, books are a child's best friend. Indeed, so true. They still remain best friends as you grow up. And diaries, <laughs> they are just a part of you. When you're writing in a diary, you're basically talking to yourself, analyzing yourself, and straightening the curve of your thoughts and deciding what future journey you wish to undertake. Let's hear Nivedita as she weaves her poem around the conversations which she has with her diary. Thank you so much, Neelam. So beautifully introduced. And uh, you almost got the synopsis of my poem. So my poem is titled, Me and My Diary. Me and my diary often have silent, scribbled conversations. Though that in reality is just soliloquy. I scribble on her core. She feels my sorrows. She soaks up the teardrops. She knows my guilty pleasures. She is the attic of my Pandora's treasures. She is the 3 a.m. friend I yearned for. My diary, my trusted confidant, sees through my opaque pages. When pain pricks and prods, as I suffer from dreptomania, she captures my flight and grounds it. I spill my venom on her. She absorbs it. Lying next to the pillow, does she wonder on my sanity? Have I reincarnated her papery limbs into a being? Or has this body of crisp paper solely making me feel worth the living? Thank you, honored guests, and my dear Neelam, for listening patiently. Uh, that was indeed a beautiful poem, and who would not listen it patiently? <laughs> so it was uh, really a nice uh, piece of work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it is now my honor and privilege to announce somebody who's as unique as her poem is titled, Unique Me, and the very beautiful part is she wrote this in her college days. She shared this secret with me. So I welcome our very dear host, Neelam Saxena, to render her poem, which is titled, Unique Me, like herself. Welcome, Neelam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nivedita. Uh, in fact, I'll make it more clear. I wrote it when I was in standard 11th. <laughs> so... Unique me. I was told that one should be like grass, ready to bend in any, in any direction, so that when the wind changes its course, the existence prevails. I'd heard that one should be like water, with an ability to fit in any vessel in which it is put, so that there's no difficulty in adjusting to what the world desires. Silly me. Silly me, I can neither be like grass nor can I be like water. I have my own existence, my own beliefs, my own ideals, and my own voice. It is for these unique characteristics that I was born in this world and I should not attempt to be like anyone else. After all, I am me and shimmer like a lamp with a light of my own. So that was my poem. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really love this first round of poetry. And I'm equally excited to move on to the second round. But before we move on, if somebody wants to say a line or two, you are welcome. Let me begin with Kavita. Um, you wanted me to say something about my poems. Um, I just wanted to uh, say briefly that... Any opinion about the poems, about 
uh, uh, being read today about your own poem, about your father, anything. <laughs> well, mm. uh, I just wanted to say that um, I was born and raised in an Indian Jewish family. And we were called the Ben Israelites, came to India um, over 2000 years ago. And uh, so that first poem that I was reading, Light of the Sabbath, uh, the Jews um, light the Sabbath lamps um, before sundown, at sundown on the Friday, and then uh, on the Saturday again at sundown. Um, my cats don't like the candles. They keep jumping, you know, and uh, trying to catch the flame. So <laughs> I have made, uh, put LED candles in the window and I light them on Fridays <laughs> and Saturdays. So um, the cats rule the house. So I just wanted to uh, tell you about my Jewish background. Um, my name comes uh, from my father is uh, not a Jewish name, but since my father was a poet, he named me Kavita. So I guess I'm his poem or um, poetry or, and I guess uh, it was meant to be a little bit prophetic. And uh, so just for Imen and uh, I wanted to uh, introduce and uh, talk about my name briefly. So that's what the second poem, when I come to that round, uh, you will understand that background. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as an electrical engineer, I'm very happy to learn that you light LED lights. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Yeah. Imen, would you like to tell us something about Tunisia? Yeah, Tunisia is a small country, but it's rich uh, with its uh, people. Most of the people are intellectual in spite of the economic crisis and some political crisis here. But uh, what what is our fortune in Tunisia is knowledge. So uh, even though you find uh, poor people, poor houses, but uh, seeking for knowledge is something holy. So... Um, I don't know. Our capital here is it just uh, having a diploma? Um, we don't have money. We don't have uh, fortune, but we have minds, only minds. And uh, I hope that my country will be better. I hope that we can overcome this actual crisis because really we are suffering. We are living in a terrible situation now, but uh, faith and hope still exist. And uh, our refuge is art. And um, what, uh, why I am appreciating this event today, because uh, art is like a bridge. We are open to each other in spite of barriers uh, made by politics or by prejudice. So uh, I'm so, so happy. Uh, in Tunisia, we are majority Muslim, but we have so many minorities. We have a Christian, Jewish, but we are in harmony. We respected each other. We are tolerant. And uh, that's uh, perhaps the magic uh, secret in Tunisia, tolerance. Wonderful. Very well said, Iman. Uh, all <laughs> words are words of heart. And so besides a beautiful mind, you have beautiful heart and that love crosses all barriers. And I'm sure that uh, you and your country will also uh, find that inner strength and light and move on. I so Vasanta, how did you move to New Zealand? Oh, it's just bad roads in India got me to New Zealand. Um, <laughs> It's just that, but once we went there, it was too good, actually. You you could not find anything negative about the place. So at some point, we started missing India. We missed the smoke. We missed the uh, autos. We missed the, uh, you know, everything. But however, um, it's it's like they, 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 you have the parsimon fruit in New Zealand, which is so sweet. So... It's it's a beautiful, sweet experience. As long as I was there, I was totally I enjoyed. And um, I, I was, in fact, elected uh, secretary to the Sandringham Community uh, Club, which was the uh, prime minister's constituency. So we had a lot of meaningful interaction. And uh, I totally enjoyed my stay. In yeah. Thank you, Asanta. And Nivedita, what do you have to say about today's meet? After <laughs> listening to all of you, something just, you know, just occurred in my heart is poetry unites 
and poetry will guide us to the path of peace and intellect, which is so important in today's time. We have uh, absolutely the globe sitting on our page today, Neelam. Each one is so unique, so beautiful in their thoughts. And uh, I think what we are able to do, we are the blessed people. We are the special people, unique people that God has given us the power to write and express and then bring all of us together on this beautiful page called Neelam Saxena's page. Indeed, we are all like beads and when woven together, we form a beautiful necklace. <laughs> so thank you, dear friends. So let us move on to the second round. <clears throat> and uh, I would like to render a very short uh, four-liner poem, as I call it. The bird of hope sings first on the branches of twilight. Never grieve for anything for the day. Always follows the night. Let's hear Iman as she renders her poem, Inner Strength. Iman. Inner, yeah, thank you very much. Inner Strength. I'm strong. I have no other choice because life has provided me with that choice. I'm strong because I have learned to survive out of pain despite the storm. I'm still waiting for the sun. Despite my falls, I still want to dance. Despite the injuries, my eyes are full of wonder. I still wish the stars. I believe that the dreams are the key to be chased. I look for rainbows through the paddles. I even clenched my fists when it came to giving up. I'm strong despite my weakness, despite my mistakes. I can give up and I keep dreaming. Thank you. Wonderful, very well rendered and again touching our hearts. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so much, Iman. Thank you. So a few uh, lines once again. In solitude, I lie quietly on the nature's right arm. In my heart shines a light divine, making my mind also calm. So let's hear Nivedita as she renders her poem, Songs of Nature. Oh, thank you so much, Neelam. So, lady, let's celebrate the beautiful spring season. Song of Nature. Melodies that are strumming are perfected in their imperfections. Song that the nature sings are composed in its connections. The verdant tone is set by the grass. The rhapsodic, like a cupid struck lass. High pitched hues of pastel <clears throat> and coruscant. Meadows spread across with flares iridescent. Chopping birds into swinging of guitars. Uh, ladies, is there any mic which is on? So I would request you to just mute yourselves because there is some kind of sound that I can hear. Eman and Neelam. Eman, dear, could you just mute your mic? Yes, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. All right. High pitch hues of pastels and fluorescent. Meadows spread across with flares iridescent. Chirping birds akin to stringing of guitars. Cascading streams personified as jaltarang or sitar. Deep in the forest, Euphoric rock band of howls and roars. The background score composed of zillion crawlies and moors. Rhythms and lyrics impeccably arranged. The orchestra of nature encompasses the unparalleled range. So this is how I celebrated spring just three days ago. Thank you so much, Neelam. Wonderful, wonderful, as usual. Very beautiful poem. Thank you, Nivi. Requiring neither wood nor urns, inside is me is a fire that burns. Requiring neither wood nor urns, inside me is a fire that burns. Advising me never to accept defeat, the blessed fruit of hope it churns. Let's hear the wonderful poet Kavita as she renders her poem, Give Me Oil in My Lap. Kavita. So the first poem was dedicated to my aunt. 
And this poem, Give Me Oil in My Lamp, is dedicated to my grandmother and a little bit to my dad as well. Give me oil in my lamp. Grandmother took me to the old synagogue, walking down the potholed sidewalks of a noisy Bombay street close to her home, every square inch populated with humanity. The oil lamp in the very old synagogue hung high from the ceiling. For a few rupees, we could keep the light burning. She was afraid to climb the ladder provided by the caretaker in case she missed a step. I was afraid for her too. So she took the donation. So he took the donation, I'm sorry, and lit the lamp. I must cover my head with a handkerchief. She would pray to the prophet Elijah for the oil never to run out. The lamp must never die out. Wanting to know in whose name he could make the receipt, I did not have a Jewish name, change it for the receipt, grandmother said matter-of-factly, or the caretaker will get confused. So I went from being called Kavita to Elizabeth. For the sake of a two rupee receipt, I really did not want or need. Thank you. A very beautiful uh, creativity uh, through words. Wonderful. Love the poem. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Friends, the necessity of moving into a larger town and the beauty of the nature are two things that can never match how much ever you may wish. At best, one can compromise. Let's hear our poet Vasanta as she tries to describe the environment through a poem, Come Stay With Me, My Dove. Vasanta. Yeah. Stay with me, my dove. It was once its cozy nest. It's now my camp. In my tent, it is resting, grunting, dating. Our little champ game of I win, you lose. Week after week, we pose, repose, and dispose. Choicest of sticks, pecked and picked. An artwork, compact and well-designed. Patterned, layered, carefully placed, an oval basket with a warm sunken well, a palm's length wood, slender, bent, symmetrically weaved, meshed, cushioned, with leaves, little white feathers, an ikabana of twigs for all weather. When they peep, stoop, and poop, black and white, were they offered a welcome drink, a garland or honey? Was there a water pond to splatter the wings wet? It was powdered red chili in the corner instead. Make home first and then babies next, unless it thought that I forgot. My apartment stoically challenged its tree top. Its message has not reached me. Oh, dear Duff, it isn't Guy Fawkes Day, yet there were city crackers bursting and chasing you from the corner in the balcony. I will make a good cuppa. Fear not, I promise. Come back, come back and stay with me, my Duff. Come back, come back and stay with me, my Duff. Thank you. So beautiful, so beautiful. I'm finding something common between so many poems. All of us are so connected to nature. Yeah. I suppose yeah. Uh, uh, we all are nature lovers, and that is very interesting. Very so what do you, Nivin? Yes. Uh, as you talk of nature, and as a poet can always, uh, you know, weave magic. So Adi and Neelam is going to make us feel and smell the smell of the petrichor. Because in the season of spring, she wants us to taste some drizzling drops of ravishing rains. 
<laughs> so over to our ravishing Neelam, I invite her to render her next poem, which is titled The Distinct Drops of Ravishing Rains. Welcome, Neelam. Thank, thank you, dear Nivi. So again, this poem was written during my college days. Uh, but this was during engineering college days. I was just watching the rains and this poem just oozed out of my heart. The drizzling drops of ravishing rain took me down the memory lane. As a young kid of Frolicsum Four, when I would watch the downpour, it seemed dreamlike and incredible too. The whole world appeared afresh and anew. Imaginary illusions would be spun and swirled. Oh, how beautiful was the wonderful world. In youth too, my thoughts flew a fanciful flight when they gazed the rhythmic rain in delight. It looked like a pure and picturesque phenomenon and the splendid shower would sway everyone. The vivacious and vibrant rainbow would make me sing. In its glowing garish, I too would smile and swing. I wondered why I have covered myself with clouds dark, the melodious marvel of the rain, why I could not have. I let the darkness, despair and depression quit and go. My feet once again began to dance, oh love. I was so contented cheerful, glad, and gay. My entire murkiness and misery had vanished that day. Now, as I watched the drizzling drops of ravishing rain, exhilaration and ecstasy flow in my vivacious veins. So that was my poem. I hope you all liked it. Beautiful. Beautiful, mm -hmm. Nidam. Thank you so much. So with this, we come to an end of today's Poetry Meet. Hope you love the poems, dear viewers. And hope you like to be a part of the meet, Kavita, Imen and Vasanta. It was Nivedita and my pleasure to be a part of this meet with all of you. Thank you so much. And good night to the viewers in India. And greetings uh, to those uh, who are abroad. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. You. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Totally enjoyed Thank you. It Our pleasure. pleasure. And uh, dear viewers, we will be commenting uh, on whatever uh, you've written for us. So uh, we'll all go through those comments. Uh, Nivedita had been highlight highlighting and yes. we'll uh, write to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you very much.